Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on the Devo Knives Buzz. This thing, uh, tell you guys right now, this is a perfect knife. It is essentially everything I hoped it to be. Um, right now, you can actually still get this knife, not this exact one with the aftermarket scales, but at Blade HQ right now, and I didn't get this from Blade HQ, I got this directly from Devo Knives. I was on the pre-order a couple months back. I waited patiently, not really. Um, and you know, now I have it and everything, but the ones that are still available, and they don't show quantities of what's available left, unfortunately. There were four variations. The only two that are left are the all blackout and the reverse tux. The reverse tux is the one that I got and what I believe is the most attractive, but of course that's <laughs> just my opinion. Uh, the price, $330 worth every single freaking penny, even without a couple of the upgrades that I have here. And a couple of those upgrades are actually a Zerku type backspacer, which you can actually still buy uh, from Blade HQ. And I believe directly from Devo Knives, as you can see right there, it is pretty attractive looking. You can see the nice little wavies going on there. If I can get that a little bit more focused, please focus, camera, please. There you go. It's polished, not super, super high polished, but I'm a, I suppose call it a uh, pretty bright polish. And the micro textured or knurled scales, whatever you want to call them, they were actually a aftermarket purchase that you cannot buy anymore at the moment. At least I don't think that uh, Kevin from Lefty C has any left. I'm pretty sure he sold all of them off. Um, there were a very, very small batch of regular tie or raw tie neural scales, and those were, um, I suppose, given away to friends and family that helped with the process of you know bringing the creation to life. So those aren't, those are just don't even think about it. <laughs> um, but still feel you know more than welcome to go and uh, message Kevin uh, from Lefty EDC and ask if he has any left uh, they're about 85 bucks and yeah yeah I mean we're talking about enthusiast pricing here an enthusiast knife made by a wonderful individual in the community wonderful individuals excuse me this Devo Nice is comprised of both Kevin from Lefty EDC and Colin Mason Pierre uh, from CM Knife designs i forget the actual proper title i'm sorry um but besides all that urban edc supply actually had a drop of them and they sold like that it was it was pretty crazy um i mean urban edc does a lot of really heavy marketing which is good for them good for them uh, they put a lot of cool stuff it would have been really cool if devo knives made an exclusive with them with the sagaha pattern or just something just something you know maybe already anodized or some sort of cool milling pattern i would have probably been salivating over that <laughs> but like i said there are two variations that you still can get the all blacked out and the reverse tux i'm gonna show you guys in a sec everything that you do get with this because i don't really think i went through everything um on my unboxing because i was just completely distracted and taken by the knife overall um let us go through specs i'm gonna read off specs directly off of devo knives because i'm pretty sure they know how to use a measuring tape unlike myself uh blade length is 3.3 inches so just be a little bit wary about your local <laughs> local blade length laws handle length is 4.2 blade thickness is 0.12 weight is four ounces and that is something i can do i can press a little button and read some numbers off of the screen There we go. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> but this is a pretty solid feeling knife. Uh, yeah. Full tie with titanium liners. Like, kid you not, everything about this knife is titanium. Uh, the, not the barrel itself, the pivot barrel, but the caps on the other. So basically, all the hardware is titanium, which is cool. The clip is a uh, wire clip. Uh, blade material that they're using is 20 CV and this is a hollow grind so it is relatively tall hollow grind and I personally don't have any calipers but I did recently watch a video of 
Kevin measuring his, and it was what like ten or twelve thousandths behind the edge. It, it's it's stupid thin, right? Really, really freaking thin, and it cuts like it. It cuts like a freaking champ, and it's just absolutely incredible. I personally haven't put my own edge on it yet, um, but when I do, it's probably going to be even better than from factory. Speaking of factory, this is manufactured by Best Tech, which is a high-end, very high-end Chinese production company. Um, pretty cool stuff that they've OEM'd uh, overall for a lot of other people. And I mean, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And having handled this, I want to be able to pick up more stuff, maybe a couple in-house designs. It's just some of their stuff is kind of weird. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like Riyadh or Wii. You know, they, they make really good quality knives, right? Yeah, Chinese knives. Yeah, they're good. Um, but a lot of their in-house stuff, a little weird, right? I, they're just trying to push boundaries and things like that. Whatever, regardless. Let's do some size comparisons. And we also have a little guest knife that we are going to show off uh, from my collection that I think is going to be just some, you know, little eye candy while I also have this knife out so it's not just... You know, by its lonesome. So here we have the Temco Knives 8020.5, a Civivi Elementum. And we got fireworks going on because it's the weekend. Either fireworks or gunshots. I don't know because of the area that I live in. Whatever. This is the Benchmade Osborne 940. Also all blacked out. Very beautiful looking. Have a bug out. Spiderco PM2. I've called that thing the Parrot 3 so many times, it's just embarrassing. Uh, but that is definitely the PM2. <laughs> and here we have Native 5. So hopefully all those knives help you get a good visual representation of what this big boy is all about. And yes, I'm going to call it a big boy because to me, this is a large knife. It's a full-size knife. Um, it's uh, more than what most people need to their day-to-day -day life. But the design is so amazing. Um, I've just been taking it to work quite a bit. Um, and then the other knife that I want to show off uh, from my collection is my mashup of two different F5.5s from Urban EDC Supply. Um, so I just took one scale or scales from another and then sold the other counterpart knife and kept this one and writ dyed it to this pretty cool color. So this is all still the original factory finish and liners and clip and hardware and all that kind of stuff but i wanted to bring this guy on just to show and also add that the f5.5 is one of kevin's favorite knives he has handled i don't know like 10 different color ways and variations uh, i know he's a big fan of it and i bought my f5.5 because of him and speaking so highly about it kevin's a pretty picky freaking guy um, he has pretty high standards, and in this kind of hobby and industry, that is very much appreciated. And to people like me who just, like, aren't, those are definitely fireworks. <laughs> just give him a second. We have a uh, Jet Hawk Stadium that we live pretty close by, and they have a game going on. And they always go off of fireworks and stuff like that. Anyways, like I was saying. I appreciate his enthusiasm and pickiness and the way he nitpicks a lot of little things because it matters, especially when you're spending the kind of money you do on some of these premium tiered knives. Now on this channel, a hundred bucks and under is, is budget territory, at least for me. I'm not trying to flex or anything like that, but I'm saying for the general public, you know, I am very confident in, in basically saying that like any knife you can pick up with you know certain companies and things like that nowadays you can get a lot of knife for the money once you go past that again in my opinion you are allowed to nitpick certain things and he does a really good job at doing so so um i was just kind of teeter-tottering between the two knives and kind of came to a conclusion that if you enjoy the F5.5, if you have multiple F5.5s, but
but you want something a little bit bigger with a much more comfortable finger choil or finger rest area um yeah the buzz it's the way to go it's essentially the same freaking thing but the f5.5 has just the slightest bit of belly the tip is also just a tad bit further up this is straight it's a straight edge there is just a couple degrees of belly to this I'm, I'm rocking it on the surface just to see it's really not much um it's it's damn near what i would call a straight edge knife um, and the hole is almost three times the size um chamfered just as well enough bite to your finger or your nail and it's extremely comfortable to use uh so i'm not doing like a complete head to head but i just want to point out a couple little things so both of them have titanium inset liners beautifully machined um actually the excuse me the devo buzz does not have an inset liner it's the actual just the lock side it's just a bar itself but there are, is heavy heavy weight relief on the actual like inside of the scale and i'll show you the factory one too because i'm sure that the knurled ones are you know, just as heavily machined so while this actually has you know full liners and weighs significantly less it's just not a super super significantly less you can check that out in a second but this is the original scale that came on it and as you can see the very deep pockets uh, for weight relieving and there's still honestly a good bit like it really does feel like like almost three quarters worth stacked of of material between my two fingers that's what it feels like to me it could just be like two quarters worth but um i'm talking about like the actual like currency money quarters uh not measurement increments um that's what it feels like to me it feels like i'm pinching like two quarters worth of material between my fingers uh because these scales are are on the thicker side but lead to a more hand filling a little bit more comfortable experience overall um and yeah the knurled ones are pretty much the same if anything the pockets might be a little bit bigger there might be some more weight relief on the knurled ones um and they might have also been machined with just a little bit more material on them to have been able to make the actual knurled pattern also um this little space up here it's not just like flat it's kind of curved i forget the proper term but also here it's just a little decorative piece right um but also i suppose functionality if you want to have it in a pinch grip feels nice and nice and soft in there it kind of dips down in there it feels good it's all rounded here at the top nice and chamfered uh there's also this little space right here that the actual knurling drops off so you don't feel that up to the edge but you do feel it up here even still it's pretty comfortable but I'm not saying that you have to go and buy all these crazy upgrades and stuff. You could take the knife as it is base, and it's still a incredibly, incredibly comfortable knife. Um, I wouldn't say it's slick, but it is, and ha oh, it has definitely less traction than some knurled scales. Uh, I will not be selling those knurled scales. Get that guy out of there. I will not be selling the knurled scales. Uh, I mean the. The original scales because i would like to do i would like to use them for uh a anodizing modification video in the near future when i have some time <laughs> so they'll just be wrapped up and i'm just gonna keep them in the pouch here also while i have this out let me you guys just let me just show you guys the actual pouch that this knife comes in which you know kind of goes into the price like you're not just getting you know the knife as it is in like a little plastic bag um or a little cheap little cardboard box like you're getting a really nice little proprietary pouch with the name um stamped in there uh also everything is nice and soft here we have the other pieces and it's just the one pocket would have been cool if there was two you know just keep like little extra pieces or whatnot not a big deal just being a picky um and these are all the little extra pieces that you get um, this is something that a lot of other knife manufacturers really should be thinking about extra pieces because if you're a Chinese OEM company 
and you don't have the workforce to do customer service on the thousands and thousands of knives that you guys pump out would be a pretty cool idea and you know what charge for it too when uh when when oem companies or specific brands sell their knives to the major online retailers dlt trading knife center blade hq uh, urban edc supply like all these big guys I, I know there are many that i'm completely missing right but just hear me out i think it'll be cool for maybe like an extra 10 bucks full set of hardware pivot bearings and depending on what the clip is made out of sure maybe an extra clip here we have a bent steel pocket clip right that's what's on it currently it's completely fine at this price point i'm not going to uh you know look down upon it because i genuinely enjoy the functionality of the bent pocket with well, bent steel pocket clip or the wire pocket clip excuse me i've been calling it that whole time uh the wire pocket clip it is completely fine it is 110 percent just functionality yes it could have been something a little bit more decorative and you know what um with the standard titanium scales the ones that come on the knife actually you can use lynch northwest deep carry pocket clips that have the actual little legs for a wire pocket clips um kevin did tell me that they won't fit on the knurled ones i told him it was fine i don't really care i love the wire pocket clip um but i think i did see jd for edc another youtuber go check him out um it was either him or someone else or somebody on instagram that i saw had knurled scales the same set of black knurled scales and they had a pocket clip on there that looked like a lynch northwest pocket clip I don't know how they got it. I don't know if maybe the spacing in there is like, we can just take a look and see if maybe there is any difference. Oh, well actually, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, maybe that's probably what it is. These slots to accommodate the actual leads of the clip, very thin, very thin and honestly a little bit shorter too. But, it's not to say that if you're a little handy with a little Dremel, you might be able to get that in there if you really, really want a Lynch Northwest uh, clip. Me? Nah. I'm fine. Fine without it. I'm fine without it. It's all good. No big deal. But that is pretty much it of what you get with this knife. You get a blank pivot. What comes installed is the DK Devo Knives logo. And the entire knife overall is sterile it is absolutely sterile and it's wonderful it's beautiful i love it um but you also get a blank pivot and one thing that i want to note when you go to disassemble this knife make sure that both sides are screwed down so this is the of course the show side the right side of the knife um i can you know unscrew it with my finger so if you really want you could take some red loctite and just uh you know seal it up permanently make sure it's cranked down all the way it also has a captured pivot which is absolutely welcomed and wonderful check that out that d-shaped pivot and it corresponds with this side over here the left side of the knife this is the original backspacer is also titanium and again with all the hardware you also get another hardened steel insert like what the hell is that and it comes essentially free with the freaking knife if uh honestly if this becomes a thing from chinese oem companies and they want to charge an extra 10 15 bucks for a full set of essentially everything but the scales liner and blade yeah please uh that is uh that would be awesome i'm pretty sure a lot of other people would really enjoy that um or would really appreciate that because you know, there are some times where, like, shit just happens. And when you go to take apart a knife and put it back together, and maybe sometimes it just doesn't go back together the way you thought it was going to. Maybe you strip a screw. Maybe you're using really shitty bits. Maybe you can, uh, you know, you don't have to go and run out and see if you can... Oh, crap. <laughs> trying to, like, get everything in there. Uh, 
you know, you don't have to go out to your local hardware store and put some weird ass uh, screw. I yeah, I've seen people do that. I, I have seen people on Instagram that have like mismatchy clips that they look like they picked up from the local Home Depot or Lowe's, um, or ordered them from Amazon. Just you know, specific uh, hardware. There was also a coaster, a couple stickers, and I think that was about it. I hope I'm not missing anything. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So going over this knife, there are multiple different deployment methods. What you have here is just a rather large hole. It is very easy to get to further down, a little further up if you want. You thumb flick it further down and it widens a little bit here. Uh, for me, that's pretty comfortable because you could just push it out. The detent, I will say, is on the lighter side. I have cleaned this out. I have like taken it apart, cleaned it a couple times already, um, just to wear in uh, past that coating of the blade. And now the action is like just, it's just stupid. It still has a little bit of sound to it. And I have um, ultralight KPL in there. Same as this guy. Um, and it still makes sound. It's not like completely, you know, silent like some knives are. Whatever, no big deal. You're going to have that. It's a pretty common thing when it comes to knives with uh, coatings or specific coarser finishes, right? Uh, those are going to be more for, you know, the user class of knife. They're just going to make a little bit of sound, right? Not a big deal. Uh, also, other deployment method, you have the BIC, I suppose, Big lighter styled, and I should have brought my actual freaking Zippo lighter because um, it's kind of you know the same concept. You just um, you just push across the top, and the lighter would ignite. Here, the actual blade comes out. The jimping is extremely well finished. It is not super sharp. It's not going to tear up your fingers, in my opinion, and it is essentially all the way up. So you don't want to go from up here. If anything, they probably didn't really need to have it about, you know, this much. They could have just had it just like the first like half of it up there because that's really the best position to do it. And I find myself uh, not only having this in hand a lot to actually, you know, use it and carry it, but uh, this is also a fidget toy at this point. And yeah, I know a lot of other a lot of other knife enthusiasts essentially use their knives as fidget toys. But this is genuinely a very comfortable fidget toy. This almost feels like I'm using, you know, like flicking a lighter. Um, just the sound, the feel, the tension overall, it feels pretty darn good. And again, the detent is on the lighter side, but the flick, it's still excellent. Um, both sides, you know, reverse flick, middle finger flick, whatever, thumb flick, and then of course the top flip with the bus cut jimping. Also another wonderful, wonderful piece of, I suppose, design is the Volksnes style jimping right up here. It is about midway or, eh, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. We'll call it midway up. Um, it's pretty fine. There's honestly not a whole lot there. But uh, it's welcome, it's cool, it's a nice little thing. Um, and it, the design or the idea wasn't stolen by any means. It's just jimping, right? It's just jimping, not a big deal. But it took a little bit of uh, design characteristics from the F5.5, something that uh, Jesper Voxness does on a lot of his other designs, whether they're custom or production knives. But there is jimping that would typically would be further down here. He actually has it up there because when you go to fully grip the knife, I mean, my thumb lands there perfectly. And every time it just feels good, it's good to go. Same thing with this. Now this is a much larger knife, but even still, well, <laughs> even still, my thumb lands right there and I could put a lot of pressure on that blade if I really wanted to, which feels just amazing in hand. Now you can grip it further down here, it's comfortable, I'm not sure why you would want to, but up here is definitely the space you want to be in, and it's good to go, it's pretty darn nice. Um, and that is really about, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, I missed something, 
that's also very important about both of these knives. Both of these knives completely are like you can completely disassemble these knives with a T8. Yeah. Wow. Just a T8. No T6s, no T12s, no weird ass freaking other little bits and screwdrivers and all this kind of stuff. A simple freaking T8. Wow. <laughs> Um, I am very thankful for that because it's really easy not to have to switch between drivers and bits and things like that. Um, and for me, like with having multiple knives in my collection, I now have a stockpile of so many different sizes of Torx bits and a couple other tools and things like that that are useful. But um, T8s are the ones that I go through the most, so I buy a bunch at a time. And not that I'm taking apart my knives all day long, every time, uh, every week. But, um, you know, sometimes they do get a little chewed up and it's the best feeling when you take out a brand new T8 bit out of one of those blister packs that they come in or even, here, where is it? Let me just sort of show you what I'm talking about. I got this guy. This is from Weeha. Now this comes with, well, not comes with, but it fits their fatty driver. Also, I believe it fits the one where the actual extra bits are stored within the handle. A little fancy one. But in here, um, they're T8s. And it didn't really cost much. There's 30 of them. Plus, I, there's extra room for other stuff. I even have my um, hinder spanner bits in there. And there's also, I think there's like six T6 bits in there too that I bought. But anyway, I mean, there's there's a lot of room in this thing. So I just have them all mixed up. There's really only three bits in there. And I don't interact with that little box often. So it's not like it's a super unorganized item. It's just, you know, you just shake it out. It's kind of like a Tic Tac box, right? Pick out what you need and toss the old one that doesn't have any bite left to it. But again, it's like the best feeling when you have a brand new bit and you go to use it to take apart a knife. So it's pretty sweet. Um, I already mentioned before, all the hardware, titanium, um, what else? Liner titanium, a hardened steel insert. <laughs> There's nothing else. I mean, this, this is a perfect freaking knife. Like, what are you doing here? Like, just go out and buy one. <laughs> Again, yeah, 330 bucks. That's a good chunk of money. But if you're an enthusiast and you are... Uh, and you have been enjoying maybe some of the other Devo knives that they've come out. The more budget ones, like they made the Growler, the Mash. Mm, yeah. I wouldn't really call the Mash a budget one, again, because of the price, but significantly less than this. There's even a version two of the Mash. I miss my Mash so much. I sold off my version one because uh, I needed the money. Um, but they also have the Pony Stout. So let's say you got the pony stout that was recently dropped. Also, who has it? Oh, it's White Mountain Knives. White Mountain Knives, I believe, still has the black micarta ones. The blue ones already sold out. There might be another run. I, I don't know, honestly. But uh, their budget stuff is freaking sweet. So I can genuinely say with confidence, full confidence, that this knife is worth it every single penny you're getting a lot for your money here genuinely so do i recommend it yeah 100 percent. with the upgrades I've t it takes it to a whole nother enthusiast level so if you're about that go for it you will not be disappointed Diva knives has just been knocking out of the park uh both kevin and colin you guys are just freaking sweet uh, and with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this little review of mine i know it was kind of like a love rant and comparison <laughs> but um you know again if you are subscribed i most definitely appreciate all your guys' support and your patience of course uh, if you are not subscribed consider subscribing because we have a giveaway coming up and i'm very excited for that a thousand subscribers um it's pretty big for me because i make videos and stuff with the time that i have just for fun i'm not looking to you know, really get anything out of it. Just being trying to be part of a community. That's all it is. So again, with that being said, I will be linking down what I can in the description and have a wonderful day.